more light on the left side because Owen's virtually in shadow. Can we swap again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, we met at our, on well on our first day of college. I looked down the list at College Hall and uh, found the percussionists, and he was about ten metres away from me, weren't he? I'd actually just um, unloaded my stuff out of my mum's car, and like I'd been in my new room at College Hall for about thirty seconds, and there came this knock. I tapped on the, the door. door and said, "Let's go for a pint." <laughs> <laughs> so. I've known them since they were still at college. So that's six or seven years now. And I've seen them really coming from, from being good advanced students to being two of the best young players in the business. When we got to college, we immediately wanted to get concerts and do gigs because it was either get a job in a bar or something like that to pay for, you know, to pay for your time at college or try and get concerts, which would be the perfect sort of training. A friend of a friend who owned a bar in Edinburgh asked if we wanted to play in the Fringe. And that was our first ever concerts, really, as a duo. I think our f I think our first concerts, like our first fringe gig, sort of helped shape what we do now, really, yeah. because we were playing to such a varied crowd of people. You know, there'd be kids right up to te through teenagers. You know, punks, grannies. Uh, that piece was called Bongo Fury, composed by myself and Ollie for our first ever year at the Edinburgh Fringe, um, and I think we've just about covered everything you can play on two pairs of bongos, so we're now going to move down to here. Well, it, as soon as you, the concert starts, until the interval, every bit of that, people should be interested. But we always speak, don't we, mm. for a start? Owen loves I mean, speaking. I'd love... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> But the thing is as well, that covers the fact that we are moving around because people don't notice a lot of the time that we are moving instruments around because the person who isn't speaking is frantically getting stuff together. We have taken that strand of programming from the fringe where, whereby, you know, sort of interspersing things that some people recognise with other things that people find groovy drumming and things like this and, and we still kind of use that as a base yeah. for our programming for recitals. You know, keeping some accessible stuff with some much more contemporary things, you know, so you can keep an audience on their yeah. toes while, whilst also giving them what they want as well. Yeah, it was a very good session and it's nice to see the look on their faces. Either they're extremely good diplomats or they're very enthusiastic. Um, I hope they're enthusiastic. They always have been. And um, 
they're wonderfully welcoming to new ideas uh, because the last thing they want to do is a conventional type concerto, but it's getting the balance right. It's the reason we sort of chose Stephen in the first place is that we know him and we, we've worked with him before and um, we get on well with him. So, you know, a session like this is never going to be awkward because we already have a relationship, you know, we have a rapport kind of thing. They've all, uh, the reason I like working with them is because they're very positive and um, very responsive. Um, you know, they don't just play uh, stuff, but they make good suggestions. Um, and it's really exciting to work with with both that talent and that energy. The most interesting thing I, I thought about that session was just hearing something. I always like to hear the, you know, the beginning of a piece for the first time. It's always really exciting. There's, there's something very attractive about these two young men who uh, can work very closely together. Um, and I wanted to sort of work with that in the concerto, the fact that they supported each other, but also were, were clearly individuals. Well, from what we just heard today, and we're working with Stephen, it sounds, it sounds like it's going to be just a, sort of up our street. Yeah. I'm intending to write a proper concerto, but at the end of the day, I also want to write something that is, if you like, a piece of entertainment as well. Um, in the way that, you know, the great concertos from the past have been written not only to make profound artistic statements, which they do, but also to delight audiences. Always a new piece is exciting, but a new piece with a full orchestra and an orchestra of the BBC Symphony Orchestra's calibre um, at the Barbican, major concert hall. I mean, I can't really ask for much more apart from it would be nice to play it again after that one gig. That's <laughs> yeah. all I'm, you know, hopefully quite a few times. Yeah, that's what I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, people never, I don't think people ever expect to enjoy it as much as they do. But I think as well, I think as well, we always enjoy it, yeah. you know, like we don't, you know, we of course do take it seriously, but once we're up on stage, you know, we don't, we're not worried about it being, you know, absolutely, you know, perfect. We'll just get up there and enjoy it and know that everyone else will then enjoy it too. Oh yeah, you wouldn't yeah, do it, yeah. the day yeah. you don't then, job number two. <laughs> We've already got about ten. Well, that's be, yeah. <laughs> We've already got about ten. Percussionist, driver, yeah. band, drummer, first, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>